After reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island, Bix Weir began his own research and developed an alternative theory, which has a different motivation for the creation of the Federal Reserve banking system, and involves patriots infiltrating the Fed to destroy it from within. President Woodrow Wilson, who strongly opposed private banks, signed off on the Federal Reserve Act, something he deeply regretted soon after. According to the Road to Ruta theory, Wilson signed off on it out of fear of catastrophic inflation. The amount of gold being found in the late 1800s was causing an endless rise of inflation. By 1900, several mining companies were harvesting gold from the Grand Canyon, which was a major undertaking. An 80-mile-long road was built to access a coal deposit for power, and barges and steamships were assembled in the canyon to deliver this coal every day. By 1912, the New York Times reported that billions of ounces of gold were estimated to be dredged from this operation. And at this time, there was only 64 million ounces of gold in the U.S. Treasury, and 160 worldwide. Adding billions of ounces would have been economically catastrophic. It would have driven the value of gold to zero, devastating the world's economies and destroying the wealth of the world's most powerful people. In 1913, the Federal Reserve Act was signed into law, the cornerstone of today's fiat currencies and debt-based economy. And in 1919, President Wilson banned all mining in the Grand Canyon. The massive influx of gold alone would have been enough to compel a new financial system. But there is more to the story. In the late 1800s, local homesteader Seth Tanner claimed to have seen mummies and artifacts in a cave within the Grand Canyon's Marble Canyon. When the Hopi learned he had seen the sacred site, they blinded him, sparing his life because of his Hopi marriage. In 1909, the Arizona Gazette reported that the Smithsonian was researching a man-made cave structure carved deep within the solid rock, 1,480 feet below the surface in Marble Canyon, big enough to house 50,000 people, with rooms full of ancient golden artifacts, mummies, and Egyptian hieroglyphs dating back 3,000 years to the Ramses dynasty. This is the same area that Seth Tanner described seeing the same thing. It's the same area where the famous Lost City of Gold was thought to be. And it's the land of the Hopi, whose ancestors once lived in the Great Hole Sipapu, commonly known as the Grand Canyon, where several geological formations have been given names from ancient Egypt. In 1956, two planes collided in midair directly above the alleged cave system of Marble Canyon. And over the next two weeks, a dozen helicopters worked to haul out debris. And yet, debris is still scattered everywhere. There were no witnesses, and the bodies of the victims were all buried in a mass grave. The Leak Project's investigation of this cave shows what appears to be the remnants of this recovery operation. The Grand Canyon is full of caves, 90% unexplored and off-limits, protected by the U.S. military. Every president since Bush Sr. has tried to secure mining rights within the Grand Canyon, and all have been denied. This leads us to the second part of the Road to Ruta theory, that the Fed has been infiltrated by patriots on a mission to destroy it from within. Our main character is Alan Greenspan, who is friends with Ayn Rand, who published his 1966 essay, Gold and Economic Freedom, on the importance of a gold-backed monetary system. Greenspan was a gold bug. In 1969, a Swedish economist published On the Road to the Golden Age, which concludes that the best way to return to sound money is to run the fiat system into the ground by printing money into infinity so that gold will restore stability and faith in the money supply, and fiat will be exposed for what it's always been, a scam. In 1971, President Nixon ended dollar convertibility to gold, which invited the money printers worldwide to let loose. Not only was Greenspan a renowned gold bug, 
He may be the most unsung hero of the computer age. He was childhood friends with the inventor of the first shareable computer programming language called BASIC, which Greenspan used to write the very first banking computer programs at his firm Townsend Greenspan, back when punch cards were still being used. By 1985, Alan Greenspan was the expert on computer banking. I suggest an Apple to see an Apple modem. Then you can call up your bank and see how much money you have. You can even pay off your bills automatically. If you have any money left over, congratulations. You're doing better than the government is. Two years later, President Reagan nominated Greenspan as Fed chairman. That same year, legislation was passed to restrict Grand Canyon airspace. During his first year as president, Ronald Reagan formed a committee to investigate the possibility of returning to gold-backed money. The majority was against it, but Congressman Ron Paul's report argued that we need to return to a decentralized gold-backed standard. At the end, however, Ron Paul proposed holding off until the current fiat system had a chance to prove itself. In other words, run the money printers and let them fail. Also in 1981, the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston published the first edition of their educational comic book, Wishes and Rainbows, which tells a story of a place that once had beautiful colors and golden flowers, but no longer does out of fear of being stepped on by the big people who live in color land, which is where the golden flowers can be found. Some say you can get there through the caves of Cobblestone Canyon, the main character of this comic, who decides to bring back the golden flowers, is Ruta. In the early basic programs that Greenspan wrote 60 years ago, Root A was the foundation. Ruta finds a golden light inside a cave of Cobblestone Canyon and begins bringing flowers back to her people, only to learn the problems of scarcity and demand. As she tries figuring out a solution, she writes the equations from On the Road to the Golden Age, print the money into infinity. In 2007, the Boston Fed published an updated version of their cryptic Wishes and Rainbows. And in this edition, Ruta's solution in the dust is 11 plus 9, which looks an awful lot like 9-11. And right after this was published, the economic crash of 2008 began. Also in 2008, the Bitcoin white paper is published. And while nobody knows who authored it, Alan Greenspan, with his 60 years of expertise in digital banking, certainly could have played a part. In an ominous sign of the turbulent times we're all living in, we're starting to see people go through some really extreme things. According to new research, millions of people in America are skipping meals every day because of the high cost of food. Even in the world's richest country, families are depriving themselves of their basic necessities due to the worst cost of living crisis in a generation. In some states, nearly 75% of U.S. households can't afford enough to eat. If you have been to a gas station, supermarket, or tried to pay your electricity bills at all in recent months, then you know the economy is a total and complete mess right now. We're seeing bills pile up higher and higher. Debt levels soar, rent and housing costs skyrocket, and every trip to the grocery store is making us more anxious than the one before. Meanwhile, wages are essentially flat. In fact, today's inflation means most workers actually took a pay cut. Conditions are getting exceedingly hard for our population, and to make things worse, a number of factors are now converging to create the biggest food crisis we've witnessed in our lifetime. In today's video, we've compiled the latest data that shows the reality many are facing, but the media seems to keep ignoring it. The pain caused by the highest living expenses we've seen since the 1970s is economically eviscerating millions of families in the U.S. and in the entire world. A new study conducted by the United Nations highlights that some things that are happening right now in developing nations are foreshadowing what's coming soon to America. The unplanned shift to green energy and the crisis in Ukraine have left many countries across the world with alarmingly low energy reserves. Fuel and fertilizer costs are so high that the entire global agricultural industry is sitting on very thin ice. Most farmers can't afford to plant crops. Those who can 
are seeing their crops getting destroyed by extreme weather events. At this point, food shortages are becoming far more extensive than anyone imagined. Unaffordable prices for gas, medicine, and housing, a stoking social unrest, and massive demonstrations all around the planet. Entire countries like Sri Lanka have gone bankrupt overnight. The new report released by the United Nations World Food Program uncovered that nearly 9 of 10 families in Sri Lanka are skipping meals to stretch out their food supply. The analysis underlined that what's going on in countries like Sri Lanka right now is a sneak peek at what life will be like in America when food shortages and food inflation really start to bite. Over the past couple of years, numerous U.S. farmers came forward to alert us about a perfect storm that was brewing in our food supply chain. In the past 24 months alone, U.S. farmers and ranchers have been plagued by droughts, record heat waves, shortages, and soaring prices of diesel and fertilizer. A bird flu epidemic plus labor shortages, fires at processing plants, you name it. The explosive food prices we're seeing on our local supermarket shelves are reflecting the combination of squeezed food supplies and the biggest increase in the cost of living in 40 years. Grocery prices have spiked to record-breaking levels, and the rising costs aren't stopping. As we reported in previous videos, the nation's major food grocers are announcing price increases of 10 and up to 70% in a wide range of products starting this month. With grocery inflation hitting 12% in September, marking the highest spike over a 365-day period since 1974, a survey conducted by Debt Hammer revealed that we're not so distant from the reality that's dripping developing nations like Sri Lanka after all. The study found that nearly half of Americans, or 45% are skipping meals as a result of inflated, unaffordable prices. The main reason why approximately 122 million people in the nation are eating less is to cut back on food spending, to be able to afford other essential expenses such as energy, rent, and gas, researchers noted. One in 10 Americans have turned to food banks in September, and 35% of people surveyed said they have fallen three or more months behind on at least one bill, including credit cards, rent, and mortgages, because their money is going to other things. Your rent is going up, groceries are going up, and gas is going up. The only thing that hasn't gone up is wages, said Jake Hill, Debt Hammer's CEO. Stagnant wages are making it harder for people to make ends meet, with the survey also indicating that 43% of people are saying that their incomes are not keeping pace with inflation. And remember, inflation jumped over 8%. So even if you were lucky enough to get a raise, you're probably still making less money than you did a year ago. Because if your employer gave you a 3% raise, you actually took a 5% pay cut. In some states, the percentage of people eating less to be able to get by is eerily close to Sri Lanka's. For instance, a separate survey by Coupon Birds exposed that in West Virginia, more than 75% of all West Virginians are skipping meals because of the skyrocketing cost of food. In Ohio, 40% of adults have skipped meals. In Virginia, 2 million people have skipped meals. In New York, that number jumps to 7 million. In Kentucky, 53% of people have skipped meals in the past 30 days. The list goes on and on as food insecurity continues to spread across the country. If food prices continue to increase at this rate, which largely outpaces increases in wages, the inevitable consequence is an explosion in the number of people facing food insecurity. The last time we had such a big run-up in food insecurity rates was in the wake of the Great Recession. But even for those not at risk of hunger or starvation, the surges in food prices are jarring. Food matters a lot to our quality of life. Not being able to buy the foods that people are used to, that your children are asking for, that your family wants. That's a really hard thing. Any disruption of habit is very, very hard. Real-time data from the U.S. Census Survey suggests that food hardship has been steadily rising in families with children this year. In the richest country in the world, children in 274,000 American households have faced hunger. They've skipped meals or did not eat for entire days because their parents didn't have enough money to buy food.